guys, welcome back to the Red Beard Outdoors YouTube channel. Been waiting on this project for a while to make sure I had everything in line before I did this video. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video, but I'm gonna do a full review on my Lakota Bighorn horse trailer that we full-time RV in. We live in this puppy. As you can see, this, this thing is massive, so Stick with it, stay tuned, and I'll give you the full tour here on this trailer. Let's go. All right, as we do a walk around real quick on this trailer, we found this Lakota Bighorn in North Dakota for sale. It was slightly used, barely even used. Um, the guy that owned it had a horse accident. Had a lot of things custom built from Lakota on it, which I will walk through with you guys. And uh, ended up falling off a horse and breaking his back and then he didn't want the horse trailer anymore. So we got a really good deal on it. It's got an 18 foot living quarters, a big mega slide, 12 foot slide right here. Um, I believe it's, a 12 foot stock area and then a mid tack and that's the ramp right there and let's start under the nose right here um an item that definitely needs upgraded is this hitch um we want to get like an airbag hitch to help with the jolting the vibration on the trailer to help it last longer so um i'm not going to show you this tag but the gross vehicle weight on this trailer is 21,600 pounds we have two large 40 pound propane tanks the bigfoot self-leveling jack system which is pretty awesome for leveling out there's your controls for it This is awesome too. We use this a lot. This is a, a hydrant coming off the 100 gallon water tank, which is right on the inside of this wall here. We have three batteries in there and a spare tire with your battery kill switch right there. And come right around this corner here. This is the fill for the water tank, and this is city water connection. put a custom light bar on here um, I really like to have this side of the trailer lit up uh, we usually have dogs staked out right here so we usually need a lot of lights for that coming around the side we have a big awning right here front door with a lighted grab handle outdoor speaker system Jensen spe speaker system with your two outdoor speakers this whole awning has a light that's ran across through here and then your exterior lighting You guys are wondering why it's tilting it's for runoff helps helps with the runoff I'm not sure if all of them do that but I think our shock might be going a little bad or either that or it's meant for runoff but I actually kind of like that it does this because uh, we put this out when it rains sometimes and kind of directs the water flow off of the, the awning instead of uh, piling it up and making it heavy so I kind of like it this way this is the back of the refrigerator access panel, and that is the furnace exhaust right there. Coming to the back, um, you have a 120 volt outlet right here, which we actually use for heating the black and gray tank. We're in the winter right now, so we definitely need that. Another item I forgot to mention is right here. This is a grill mount. We mount a propane grill to that. Uh, it's a little grill we use quite a bit 
and we keep that stored in the truck when we're not using it in one of these uh, storage we boxes. Need on that. The truck. Entrance to the mid tech with a foldable step here and up front there. And that light up there, I uh, ended up installing that light. It was um, like a halogen light before, which created like a small 10 foot by 10 foot square on the ground, which hardly covered anything. That's a big uh, LED 180 degree light. I'm thinking about adding more to this side, probably above that door over there. And then we have a ramp back here to the stock area with a big swing out door. We'll go in there here in a little bit. And I have also installed a backup camera, which is a game changer. It's a wireless one. I wired that into the lighting wires in there. And there's actually another one in there that looks down on the horses in there. The ladder folds out and goes up to the hay rack. I'll show you that here in a sec. And so far I've gotten two of those lights that we just talked about on this side of the horse trailer. And then we got the uh and then we got the light bar which is up there as I mentioned. So, like I said, I really like to light up this side of the trailer because we usually let the dogs out on this ramp right here. And like I said, we need all that lighting as much as possible. So, a slide out actually makes it a little tough for the lighting. I'll show you what this thing looks like lit up at night right now. Okay, up next we have the power plug right here. And this is a cable system, which we do not use. And then that's the water heater, which is located in the bathroom. And on the left over here, you have the gray tank and the right, you have the black tank. That's your dump right there. Pretty standard stuff. Let's pop this ladder open and go up top here. Up here on the landing, we have a nice little platform for whatever, but we put hay right here, which is nice. We often put our Starlink internet up here and route the wiring into the stock area. And then you continue to have more hay rack space right here. Uh, it's not covered. Unfortunately, that would have been nice, but um, it probably also limited us to what we could actually put inside that hay rack. I think those are enclosed ones are pretty sharp. In a way, I'm kind of glad we don't have it, but as you can see, the birds have hit our totes, so we use, it, we use these totes as storage up here because that's something you really need when you're living full-time in an RV is storage. So you have two exhaust fans. That one's in the kitchen. And this one's in the bathroom. It's a shower skylight, refrigerator stuff, AC, and the wine guard, which I will probably do a video on that in the future. And then right there you have the cable antenna. Something we opted since we live full time in this trailer, we got equine cool done on our trailer, which is a, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like a rubber adhesive white as you can see that reflects the sun away from your trailer and provides kind of a form of insulation and keeps it so much cooler inside the horse trailer and the stock area in the mid tech which is huge our ac doesn't have to work as hard we opted for that and it has a lifetime guarantee and it it also creates a bunch of watertight seals to prevent linking so really glad we opted to do that they drove out to where we were parked actually did it in at nebraska and they applied everything on site where we were parked so it worked out really nice there's the top of the slide 
has an awning on it to keep rain off of it. And then right here we have a, a generator. Let me pop this open. This is our Cummins Onan 3600 liquid propane generator. So it's fed off of those 40 gallon tanks up front there. I like this for a certain number of reasons, which I'm not gonna go over today, but there is a downside to it is it burns through the propane pretty quickly. So in a way, I wish I had gas over the propane, but that would also cause a lot of difficulty at the truck stops. But I think it's a hair undersized at 3,600. I wish it was a little bigger, but um, maybe a 4,000, but uh, it definitely gets the job done. We have a gas generator always on standby. Uh, we actually kind of use that one more because it's more efficient and doesn't burn through all our propane quickly. And depending on how you buy propane, it's it's a little bit more expensive than gas is, especially when you burn through it quickly because it burns through it quicker than what the gasoline does. We're in Colorado right now and it's December. As you can see the mountains over there. There's a winter storm coming, so I thought I better get this video done before it's too late. That ladder system pins in place right here. And also when that folds out, it also pins into that right there. So that's how that locks into place. Okay, so typically this is where the horses go. But as I mentioned, we're in winter mode right now. So it's more of a storage area. Um, so it's where we keep our four-wheeler. Uh, this is our workhorse. We like to use it a lot more than the truck. So uh, we also rode dogs with a, a roading kit here on that so like i said not too much exciting back here this is just extra storage and we got the starlink set up back here uh let me show you this floating gate right here um it has a tracking system and then right here are these little levers just lock in place so this gate can float the whole length of the, the stock area which is awesome Really love that feature. That that was a custom built feature that Lakota doesn't offer, but uh, the previous owner had put in on this um, on this horse trailer. So pretty grateful for that. Uh, we don't have insulation up top, but we got that equine cool. Um, not sure if that needs insulated yet or not. That might be a future project, but for now we uh, we think the equine cool is getting the job done. So pretty happy about that. You guys are wondering what that pole is. That's a Starlink mount pole. Um, I don't have it picked up very well. I need to work on that. So that's the back here. So before we go inside, this is the stock light switch right here. And then we have the side lights and the back lights. Now those back lights were from Lakota actually put nice LEDs on the back. Why they didn't do it on the side, I don't know. Let's pop open the ramp and this side door real quick. This is really useful because we do a lot of loading and unloading through this door right here. Me and Kelly work together to load in here or we can just like set stuff in here. Cause this is kind of our garage slash storage area right here so this is our drop down ramp which is really easy to drop down spring loaded we usually run the four wheeler up this ramp and this is where we keep it um, but we have the trailer configured in winter mode right now. That's what I like to call it. And we aren't traveling with horses. And that's why you saw all that storage in the back instead of up here. And usually the dogs aren't located right here. But um, let's go inside and I'll try to explain that better in there. These are only 8K axles. Not too thrilled about that, but I haven't had any issues yet, knock on wood. Um, 
And if you're wondering how the math doesn't add up, right? Because earlier I told you it was like 21,000 gross vehicle weight pounds. Well, you got 16,000 on the back that that can handle. And then the nose takes on something like uh, five to 6,000 pounds on the truck, which is why we have a huge truck. We got a Ram 5500, which um, isn't here right now, but I'll do a video on that truck in the future. So let's go into the, the mid tack. All right, as I mentioned, we have this in winter mode right now. Uh, this is an insulated mid tack, so it stays really warm in here, keeps the dogs warm. No air leaks, no airflow in here, so pretty good deal. Um, usually there's a saddle rack right here, and that ramps on the other side of these right here, and we drive the four wheeler in and out here. And we have all of our bridle hooks, more hooks here, blanket bar, which we hang a lot of stuff off of. And then this guy right here, I built this guy right here. It's what I like to call the power wall. It's just a uh, charging station for all of our stuff since we live on the road. We have a lot of different batteries that we need to use. Ryobi's for radios and, and fans and stuff. And then I got the DeWalt drill and the rigid drill for replacing tires. And we also use those for the jacks. And we carry a leaf blower and uh, often a battery leaf blower to keep things charged and so we can blow out this area or the, or the stock area having a a leaf blower is a big deal i i really love that this is the door to the bathroom on the inside in the living quarters but we're not going to go in there yet here's the door that goes back to the stock area and like i said this is in winter mode right now so it's used for a lot of storage and it's also kind of the the dog area you know this is where we get dog food and everything's prepped right here that's the uh side door that i showed you earlier and normally not all this is in here we have crates in here everything's a little bit more organized but with horses um we're we got a lot more room to uh to travel this way in winter mode so when we're in winter mode, this is my garage right now. This is our garage area back here. So um, that's what we use it for. There's that leaf blower. Like I said, that, that thing is handy. We don't normally travel with a shop vac, but with no horses, we have the luxury of, of doing that. And this actually, the shelves and stuff actually fit in the mid tack when we're we're not traveling in winter mode. Really great LED lights up there. Really lights up that place up in here and it also lights up the mid tack well. Um, something this mid tack doesn't have that I'm pretty disappointed about is any kind of power outlet. Um, so unfortunately we kind of run it through the door right now but we're going to install like a like a plug we're gonna drill a hole in the wall and install that plug i'll show you guys that in the future um that is going to get installed very soon so for now we just run it through the door and that was some of the cords you saw going out the back of the, the horse trailer and uh we run this little heater in winter mode keeps the dogs really warm in here and comfortable um it's way warmer in here than it is outside and even back here in the garage stock area um, It's probably like 40 degrees back here. and It's about 55 degrees in here and 55 is about where we like to keep it. We don't want to get these dogs too hot They don't need to be that hot. So we have the power outlet installed since I've been filming this um, We're definitely gonna clean that up some more, but we came in through the wall right there and back in here is what it looks like from the stock area plugged in right there 
if you guys follow the channel we just lost a horse her name is melody um we put her horseshoe right there to that way we can see her every day and think of her All right, when you walk in from the mid tech, you come into the bathroom here, and I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the bathroom. I'm not gonna be like everyone else on YouTube where they open every cabinet and drawer and everything they have and explain what's going on in here. I'm not gonna open all that, that up, but this is pretty much Kelly and I's closet right here. Um, a lot of uh, the majority of our clothes are located right in this area right here. Um, we have some up in the bed, but uh, most of it's right here. Uh, when you go full time, you really have to downsize your wardrobe, but um, uh, we definitely get by just fine. Uh, this is all of our hanging storage right here. It has a nice little light in here. And then we have sock drawers, underwear drawers, and more storage right here. And then right here is the shower. if the camera does it any justice but it is bigger than it looks and it's actually quite comfortable and I love having that skylight uh, something about taking a shower uh, on a sunny day with that skylight coming in there it just I don't know makes your shower a lot more enjoyable so these just slide together and stick together by a magnet so I added this hook for my towel right here and this is Kelly's towel hook and setup right there exhaust fan controls we have the this turns on the stock area light and then the light switches right there for the bathroom and then um, nice little mood lighting right there so our Dometic toilet right here this is our inverter and fuse box area right here with the breakers all located in there. We got more storage and the water heaters in here. And then this is our sink. Um, the toilet's not really in the way. Uh, we can stand in front of the sink and, you know, do what we need to do to get ready. Got our medicine cabinet and the exhaust fan right here. And we also have soft touch roof right there. Nice little medicine cabinet. It's pretty deep back in there. That's the bathroom with a pocket door right here that can actually lock. And then goes on into the living quarters part. So let's start with the slide out. Once, once again, more mood lighting. We have recliners, which are awesome. Definitely for watching TV right there, which I'll go into in a little bit. More storage across the top. Very grateful we have that. And moving on to this part, which I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this, is there used to be a dinette right here well I gutted the whole thing and customized this desk cut it up and did some work to it and ended up putting a an office right here instead of a dinette and it left a bunch of open room right there pretty glad on how all this turned out uh, it works really well had to do a lot of customizing right here but uh, I will uh, have a video on this in the future that you guys can watch on how I converted this over to an office from a dinette.
This extension right here, I made it so it folds down and gets out of the way for when we're traveling. So it just folds down and gets out of the way. But when it's out, it makes a nice little area for a dog bed and the dogs hang out right here underneath it. It's not really in our way at all. This slide is four feet deep. So it's a pretty deep slide. It comes in quite a bit once uh, you close it. But I have a, a, a real sturdy monitor mount there that's meant for going down the road and got my dual monitors on there plus my laptop. Moving on, we have a really nice mirror right here. Really have this empty space right here that we didn't know what to do with. Um, we thought about it for a while and we kind of took our Swiffer and our broom in that corner with the trash can and got the dog bowl right there. Coming around, you got your Dometic thermostat and another exhaust fan right there. And you got your 8 0 Dometic refrigerator. When the furnace setup is down below there. Got kind of a pantry drawers right here where we keep food in. Got the fridge. Um, if you guys are wondering if this is enough fridge or not, it is. Um, we really haven't had too many issues with running out of space. Uh, you just kind of learn how to purchase differently when you don't have a big fridge, but it really gets the job done. It does what we need it to do. Right here, we have a convection microwave. So essentially you can bake inside here. And it's also a regular microwave. And just more storage. Got the Keurig with lighting right here. Cooktop, which we use a lot. A lot more storage, more mood lighting, our kitchen sink. Now we got dinner thawing out there. Um, this kitchen sink, uh, it's not very deep, but it's been perfect for us so far. We, that's where we do our all our uh, dishwashing in there. So works pretty good for that and has a regular mode and a spray mode. More lighting, more outlets down here. Control that right here. We've got our air fryer back there and then our bar top. And that's the kitchen portion. This extra cabinet right here. That's usually an, an addition that you have to ask for. So really glad that that came with that. We definitely need that for a lot of like coffee cup storage and stuff like that. So we use it for all sorts of stuff. So another custom feature from Lakota that the guy had put on this trailer previously is if you if you're noticing all of this extra space right here, like as you can kind of see, goes around the trailer. The previous owner had an additional, I don't know, it's roughly around six to eight inches of extra height added to this trailer. Which I'm in love with. It just makes it feel so much bigger in here. Really opens up the floor plan and gives us more space. It just makes it feel bigger, especially with this hickory color, which is the lighter color. They have a darker color, which I kind of wanted, but the, the wife wanted hickory. So that's what she got. Um, but I'll have to admit that it, it really kind of lightens up the area in here a lot more probably than what that darker stuff would this is our ac and it's ducted We've got all these vents that run throughout uh we got a speaker system uh i ended up pulling out the cheap old rv speakers and added these kicker speakers real easy install just a plug and play wire replacement Real easy install if you guys are thinking about doing that to yours. 
um, the speakers that come with this thing suck so here's our entertainment center this TV pops out and it faces the recliners which are over here and then we got the radio system, Jensen radio system and uh, all the sound and music comes out of these speakers we just talked about so another feature we really wanted when we got the trailer was this fireplace we wanted to be able to use electric heat instead of wasting all our propane all the time especially if we have power available so um super glad we got this fireplace on there that's a that's a game changer and we've been using the the crap out of it we've been using it a lot so if you guys are wondering what's up right now we're actually we have puppies um we uh had to do a lot of thinking on this one on how are we going to uh how are we going to fit puppies in the trailer so luckily we we figured it out and got the job done and decided to do it right here in front of the front door so as you can see there's a bar right there there's two bar stools that go with this uh we threw those in storage once we realized we're having puppies because we needed the space and this was like the first perfect fit for the whelping box so it worked out really well there's a additional storage over there and then this is our front door and our hot rack which we hang a bunch of stuff on there <laughs> um you have a button cloth window shade right here which i actually love it's really nice and then i can't show you right now but but this thing right here is like a a screen door that slides and connects to these two magnets and then it just it's spring loaded and it just shuts on its own once you uh need it out of the way so really nice on nice days to open that up and and use that here's the control panel this is our propane generator start uh, when we got this trailer it only had 30 hours on the generator so more of a reason why that guy hardly ever uses trailer which is which is good for us uh awning and slide out controls the grab handle i showed you all the bed lighting lights which is crazy we have four of them this turns on the wi-fi wine guard that i showed you on the roof and then you have the accent mood lighting that i've been showing you and then the overall lights for the living quarter area and then you have awning and exterior lights and then you have your black and your gray and your fresh water and your batteries hot water heater propane and the water pump controls lakota has a digital one of these now um i've seen videos on it i don't think i would like it as much as i i like these old school switches but um who knows maybe i would like it real quick i'll show you how to pop this tv out it just slides and that way you can watch from the recliners right here uh, we have hooks on both sides here that we added for coat hanging so right across here it goes behind the fireplace all the way across sorry for the puppy miss but um this whole area right here is a water tank all the way across there and i believe it is 100 gallons so uh boondocking and being off grid it lasts at least six days and that's uh taking kind of long showers with it it lasts a long time and that's what i'm using right now because we don't have any water on this campsite right right here so we're using that water tank a lot and we we've used it a, way more than we've used city water since we've owned the rv all right let's make our way up into the bedroom
All right, guys, welcome to master bedroom. The extra height that I mentioned right here gives you a lot more room to make the bed. And you can actually sit up in bed and do things up here with a lot more headroom. So as you can see, we have a ton of lighting up here, like really overkill, but it's pretty awesome. There's four different lights to choose from. As you can see, we have storage on both sides. Uh, there's little cubbies on both sides and then side overhead storage for extra clothing storage. Right here we have a pop-up plug right here. It's got two USB ports and two regular 120 volt plug-ins. And here's the ceiling. And we have a little TV up here that we have hooked up to a Chromecast and we watch Netflix and whatnot up here. That's the control panel. You can control all four lights right there. As you swing around, there's four outlets right there that control everything. This is an exit window. That's a regular window. Um, so we often, if it's nice out, we'll open these, we'll open up that window and turn on the max air fan to let a lot of airflow happen up here. Really cool things off. The light that we use the most is this one. It's just kind of a really cool mood lighting and it's not too bright. It's really good lighting to watch TV with and that's the one we use the most. So yeah, that's the master bedroom. All right guys, that's our home. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing all this and I know it's kind of a long video, but um, I just wanted to give you every nook and cranny and feature that was possible on this trailer and, and why I ended up choosing it to full-time RV in. Uh, we definitely needed this big slide out and tons of space to uh, stay out of each other's hair. This is probably one of the best floor plan layouts on the market. And trust me, I looked around. I probably looked around at 5,000 trailers trying to determine which one I was gonna land on. And we looked at Twister, Bloomers, uh, Four Star, all the high-end brands. And I kept coming back to this Lakota because it had this 12-foot slide. Um, the only other brands that I know of that have this 12-foot slide is Featherlight and SMC. Um, and my last trailer was a Featherlight. I'm a huge fan of those trailers, but um, I also heard the newer ones kind of went downhill. Any kind of feather like past 08 uh, was built by a different company that bought out feather lights. So I don't know the whole background on that, but uh, they cost a lot more than these Lakotas and, and I'm not a huge fan of SMC. So we just didn't even rule that one in, in the picture. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Do me a favor and subscribe. I'm gonna have a bunch more videos coming up on projects on this trailer, projects on the truck. I need to do a, a truck review, which I'll have uh, coming up shortly. And uh, join in on our travels around the country that we're gonna be doing in this, uh, this big horse trailer. I will see you guys on the next Redbeard Outdoors episode. Get outdoors, keep RVing. Catch you guys on the next one.